Flash photography can definitely seem complicated. In fact, that's the number one request we get from our readers at improvephotography.com is for us to give you, give you just a simple step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get started in flash photography. I think the reason that so many photographers are intimidated by flash photography is because they see studio setups like this with a dozen different lighting modifiers and light stands and battery packs and studio strobes that it really scares you away. But really all this gear is used just to make a simple portrait and you can do it with much, much less expensive gear and much simpler gear. So we're going to move over to the set now and explain step by step how to get started in flash photography in 10 minutes for less than $150. So that's an expensive setup, but we want to show you how you can get started for really, really inexpensive. And this setup is one that we use all the time, even with the expensive gear. This uh, is just so simple that we use it all the time for our shoots. So this is the flash that we recommend on improvephotography.com slash flash gear, mostly because it's under a hundred bucks. If you just press and hold the power button, it turns on. And then if you want your flash photography to be extremely simple, you just put it right on the hot shoe of your camera and every time you take a picture, it will flash and you're set to go. The only time we'd really use this setup is if we're shooting a wedding reception and there's a ceiling that we could bounce the flash off of, uh, off the ceiling to get a little bit more directional and softer light. Uh, you know, just because it would be unwieldy to walk around with a, a light stand and, uh, you know, try to set up for each candid picture happening at a wedding reception. That's just kind of running and gunning quick. Uh, quick and dirty photography. So that's when you'd use the flash on the camera. The trouble is with it on the camera, you just get that flat light coming straight from the same angle as the camera and it doesn't look good. So what you're going to want to do is use a uh, flash trigger and receiver and hold and get your flash off the camera so you can get some directional light. Yeah, and the best way to get your flash off camera and create side lighting or off camera lighting is you want a set of triggers and receivers and they work really well. You put your trigger in the hot shoe of your camera, you put your flash on the receiver like that. Okay, It's really easy. So then when it fires you can do it really well. You know, and there's no special camera settings, right? No, no special camera you just, settings. As soon as you plug that, those things in, you press click on the camera and it goes. That's yeah. all it takes. It's as if you put the flash right in the hot shoe like we showed you before. No special camera settings. Just turn it on, plug it in, you're good to go. Uh, this is infrared, so it has some limitations though. Uh, direct sunlight doesn't work so well. Long distances doesn't work so well. So you might want to consider some other options, but for just getting started, this is 20 bucks and you're good to go. It's great to learn with and get started with. Yeah, and so a lot of people, they see that we recommend these and they say, wait, but I thought my camera could fire my flash without any trigger or receiver. And that may be true. There are some of the newer flash units if you work it with the same brand camera, so Nikon flash with Nikon camera, Canon flash with Canon camera, etc. If you work it with the same brand and they both have the technology built into them, then you can fire it just with, with the camera. But guess what? These cost $15. Um, and so to not have to deal with the menus and getting it to work, which can be complicated when you're first starting out, is definitely easier. Just buy these, they're so much simpler. But the other thing is, when you're, when you're doing that, you have to buy the expensive Canon or Nikon or whatever other brand flash you're using. They're extremely expensive. Four to six hundred dollars for a flash that this one costs 80 bucks. And this does 95% the same things as the Canon or Nikon brand flash. Uh, so we, we really recommend this system. But the infrared has those limitations that it won't work in great sunlight uh, or from far distances. So we like to use these radio triggers. These are again off brand. You can see our recommendation at improvephotography.com slash flash gear. You, they're the same, they're transceivers, so that's the exact same unit as this. You could switch them around. Put one under the flash, one on the camera, and you fire and the flash goes. That's all it takes. 
Uh, so this system I think is the easiest way to go. Your flash is off camera and you didn't have to mess with any weird camera settings. It's just going to work. But if you have just direct flash, your lighting isn't going to look real good. It's going to look really hard because that's a small light source. And you'd have to like hold out the speed light and try to take pictures, which wouldn't work so good. So what you'll really want is a light stand. And on the light stand, you can't attach the flash directly to it. So what you need to do, I mean, it's just not the same mount. So you need a flash bracket, they're, you know, five or ten bucks that'll just hold the flash just like that and then you kind of just screw it on it's really simple and then that's going to hold your flash and then you're going to want a lighting modifier we like umbrellas uh, when you're starting out they're just so easy to use you'll just expand the umbrella and then just stick it right here uh, in the umbrella holder and you're set to go uh, that kind of setup is $150 and you're out the door. It'll work with Canon, Nikon, Sony, whatever you shoot, and you have off-camera flash. The only other thing that you need to know uh, when you're using off-camera flash is, okay, it's firing off-camera, but how do I use it? With this flash, it's so simple. Press to the right if you want more power. Press to the left if you want less flash power. That's really all you need to know to get started. There are flashes that do ETTL or ITTL, which means that the camera sends exposure information to the flash to tell it how bright or dark to be. But it just doesn't work out very well because most of the time I don't want a neutral exposure from my flash. I want it to be really bright to get a high key look or really dark. And so the, it sounds nice to have that ETTL, but in reality, you're gonna be changing it anyway. So I like to use these cheaper flashes that, you know, if you, if you take a picture and it looks like the flash is too bright, press the left button and you're fixed. Uh, it really is very simple and that's how you get started in flash photography in 10 minutes or less. Exactly. And to get started, don't, I mean, maybe people are intimidating to take pictures of, so maybe don't practice with them, maybe get some on the, like a tabletop of like a fruit basket or something and practice your flash photography that way and see how it works and experiment with it that way and then go grab some people and then call yourself a pro down the road. So uh, take it step by step, start small and just kind of play with it until you're a little more comfortable with how the equipment's working for you. Yes, the biggest thing is just try it. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Just get the equipment that we recommend and it's just so simple to get started, but too many photographers are just scared away from it.